So a lot of you have been asking me to do a video about processing in general and I do want to do more processing videos on this channel um, but I don't think it makes sense to just launch straight into a processing video because there's so many steps before then. There's acquisition and how you calibrate the frames and that sort of thing. So I think the best place to start is simply with a video that's just about dark frames. So let's learn about dark frames, what they are and how we can use them properly to calibrate our images. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So last night I was getting some shots of the Pleiades. So I've got my light frames in there and I've got my dark frames in here. Uh, but how did I get those? Uh, well, I was using, this is my acquisition computer. So this is outside. I was using Sequence Generator Pro. And you can see here that I've got a light run, which is my one minute exposures. And I did a, a bunch of those. Um, this progress bar is uh, wrong because I restarted it and did a few extras and I've got dark frames here now sequence generator pro uh, does this automatically when you select dark it knows that my uh, in this case QHY9 camera that I've been using um, actually has a shutter so the shutter it's got a mechanical shutter which means it actually closes the light aperture it covers the sensor and then takes a dark now if your camera doesn't have this you'll have to make sure that when you capture your darks you put the cap on the camera or take the camera off and cover it up so that you're not getting any light into your frame at all and of course uh, you'll end up with a blank image which is what you expect <laughs> And sometimes you see things like this, that's a little cosmic ray strike. So little particles flying through space sometimes hit our sensor and that shows up. Uh, but let's have a look at, uh, at the darks that I got last night. So, oh, that's the light by the way. So that's, that's one of the one minute subs. And now I'll just check out one of the darks. Okay, it's dark, as you'd expect. But if we do a stretch on this, let's just go to Process, Ex Process Explorer, Screen Transfer Function. And I'm just going to hit the Atom button, which is also um, Command A or Control A to do the auto stretch. And you can see there's a lot of stuff in there. Now, if you don't use darks, this is the sort of stuff that messes up your images. You've got all of these little dots around the place. I really zoom in to the pixels you can see you see these hot pixels so that's where one of the pixel worlds has filled up with charge uh, for various reasons um, sometimes heat related sometimes the pixels just broken and they fill up when they register a full value or close to full value now there's also a lot of random noise in the back and that is uh, bias and this noise should be averaged out when we stack our darks so that's what we're going to do first we're going to stack all of our darks together to get a nice master dark so for that we're going into image integration which is here I'm going to add all my darks There they all are. And I'm just going to leave it at default settings. And apply global, which is the little round circle here. Obviously, we're in Pix Insight. Okay. Now, I mean, you don't have to do this in Pix Insight. You can do this in any program you use, like Deep Sky Stacker or Nebulosity or anything else that does 
uh, stacking and astro processing. Uh, but we ended up here, we're just going to close the um, rejection windows that it comes up with and we've got our final integration here. Still looks pretty dark so I'm going to apply that auto stretch and now we can really see the noise that is not random. So this is noise that appeared in all the frames. You can see there's a lot of uh, bleed on the edge here which gives a huge gradient lots of vertical lines. Now this, these sorts of vertical lines will show up especially if you don't dither in your um, acquisition process these vertical lines show up in your final stacks. So by creating this dark and removing basically subtracting all of this noise from the image it'll clean up our subs. So if we go back to one of these subs and have a look at it you'll see it's also quite noisy. You see these hot pixels all over the place. The lines certainly aren't obvious uh, at a single sub, but uh, when you stack, uh, they would become obvious. So we're going to, going to apply that dark frame now to one of the subs and see the difference it makes. So I'm going to open up the image calibration tool and I'm just going to have master dark selected and in this case I'm going to save this dark so I'll save this off to a file here and I'll just use the XISF format or fit is fine as well I'll call it master dark 60 seconds and it's important if possible to match your dark exposure length with your light exposure length. So because I was taking one minute subs on the Pleiades here I want to use one minute darks so that gives us a, a good um, a good match between the noise that's happening on each frame. So I'll call it master dark and I'll just put in my camera so I know which camera I'm using and sometimes I put in the date too because you can reuse your darks for quite a while um, so I'll just put December 2018 Now I'll load the dark that we just created up in here, master dark, and instead of going through all the files I'll just go through one for now. And another important point to make is you want to, you want to do this first. So this is the first process you do before any other processing is applying darks. You don't want to register or star align anything or in any way alter. This is this is something that we're applying to the raw data that came straight out. So I'll pick um, 21 since that's the one that's open on the screen there. Open and if I hit apply global it'll run through and apply that dark to that light. Now I'll open up the lights folder and there should be a new one in here, there it is underscore C, so that's calibrated, underscore calibrated so I'm going to open that in PixInsight and give it an auto stretch okay now if I zoom in you can't see any of those hot pixels that we saw before so I'll do a comparison there's our calibrated frame, here's our uncalibrated frame. See all these little dots here? And they're all gone. So we've got a much cleaner image. Now you'll, you might notice that um, sometimes where a dot was, because of the subtraction process, you end up with a dark spot. See there? But those dark spots are easier to average out in an astrophoto than the white spots are because the the background of space is dark anyway but also because as we're dithering because each shot um, moves around a little bit dithering is the process where you move the telescope just a little bit between each shot so this dot that would be here in a frame is going to move around a lot and that essentially makes it random so as that dot will be moving around from sub to sub um, that will get averaged out in the in the end when we go to stack. 
So now that we know that that calibration works, we're going to go through and just do it to all of them. So I'll go add files and I'll add every single one except 21 because we've done that one already. They're on my frames and apply global and it'll go through and do all of them. Okay, that's all done. So if I switch over to our light folder, you can see that there's an underscore C for every single frame in here. So they're all calibrated. And we'll open up our star alignment tool. Now I've got some old data in there. I'm just going to change this. Let's align on, say, frame 22, because that's somewhere in the middle. And clear out all these and put in my target images, which are all the calibrated frames. Shift click to select them all, add them in, and default settings are usually fine for this. Just apply global, and that will now align all of our images, and we'll end up with another set of images. Okay, our star alignment is done. So if we check the folder now, there should be a bunch of underscore R files as well. So they're the ones we're going to use for the blink process now. Blinking is a fantastic tool because it allows us to animate the exposures, but also we can pick out any of the bad frames. So let's just head in here and load up all of those underscore R's with a shift click. Open. Okay, that looks like it's loaded them all in. Uh, so the blink tool lets us hit this play button here and it will just loop through the frames. Um, but the first thing we'll notice is that the sky varies quite a bit. And you can see that I changed the um, framing halfway through the process, so I'm probably going to ditch those frames too. But the first thing I'll do is hit this auto stretch button here, which will stretch each of the images individually so that the sky background looks roughly similar. And that'll make it easy for me to blink them again and pull out the ones I don't like. Okay, that's done. So if we hit the play button again, you can see the sky background is now normalized between all the frames, which is great. Uh, so the second thing I'm going to do is get rid of these badly framed ones. So I'm using my scroll button on the mouse. And you can see when I scroll up and down, you can use arrow keys as well to go up and down. I can see it's from here. There we go frame 10, 11, 12, so I'll just go through and each one of these that are poorly framed I will untick. There we go. Now if I hit play again, those should be removed from the animation. Now I want to get rid of the ones that have any kind of big satellites going through them like that. So I'm going to remove that tick there and just using my arrow key to step through here. They all look in focus and doesn't look like I've got any bad frames through wind or anything like that, which is good. There's another one. Get rid of that. And now the animation should be free of satellites as well. The blink tool is also good if you are looking for asteroids. So sometimes I'll sit here and zoom right in and look for any moving asteroids in the frame, which are actually fairly common. So it's a good good exercise to do once you have your your data aligned and blinking. But for now, what I'm going to do the last step is I'm going to select all of those ones that I unchecked using the command or control key 
to select all of those bad frames and I'm going to hit the move button I'm going to move them to a folder in this case I'll just call it bad subs that just moves them out of the way so now I'm ready to go into my integration tool and stack so image integration get rid of the last bit of data add all my registered files because we've moved the bad frames out of there and how many do we have about 41 that's good 41 one minute subs so now I'll just go ahead and stack those okay image integration is complete uh, we're gonna close the rejection windows and just take a look at our integration here and it's not stretched obviously straight out off the bat so we're going to run the screen transfer function auto stretch and great we have a nice clean looking image so the next steps would be to clean up the vignetting on the sides using dynamic background extraction or automatic background extraction maybe do some star reduction and save off the file um, but basically that's how you calibrate and get a nice clean image if we look up close you can see it's quite smooth quite noiseless none of that hot pixel stuff no vertical lines or banding so it's a really nice calibrated clean image and the stars are quite round which is always a, a good sign so I hope you enjoyed that basic tutorial on dark frame basic image calibration with Pix Insight. This is sort of the foundation of what you need to know to get started with astrophotography. Um, everything from here on in becomes a little more nuanced and everyone has their own different sort of style and process. But everyone has to do this. Everyone has to do image calibration. It's the only way you can get a really nice clean image. So hopefully that helps. Remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs>